Uh, I always thought that I had a fairy tale family waiting for me when I turned 18 and, and my birth records would be opened. And um, it was quite a shock to learn that that wasn't the case at all. My birth mother was 17 years old, um, brutally raped, and as a result became pregnant with me. But in 1972, when I was conceived, my life was protected by a law that said that my life had value. And despite the law being there for me, my birth mother succumbed to the pressure of carrying a child conceived out of rape, and at the advice of her mother, found herself at a back alley abortion clinic. At that clinic that day, while standing in front of the man that was gonna take my life, my birth mother changed her mind. She left, never looked back. Her mother hid her from the outside world. She gave birth to me and never even looked at me. But she gave me the greatest gift that I have ever received. On top of giving me my life, she gave me an amazing family. And for that, I'll forever be grateful. My birth mother passed away March 6th of this year um, from a urinary tract infection that went septic at the age of 57. For seven days, she was on a ventilator fighting for her life. And for seven days, I was sitting beside her praying to God that he would give me more time. Um, she was with me when I took my first breath and I was holding her hand when she took her last. And does it really matter what happened in between? You know, she valued my life. She valued my life enough to, to give me my life and I valued her life enough to be there when she passed. And her story, she's the hero here. She's the one who, did, who made all the sacrifices. I'm just the one who received her gift. If abortion would have been legal in 1972, at the advice of her mother, I would not be sitting here today. And one of the things that she said um, after she placed me for adoption was, the hardest part for her was the first 30 days because she knew she could change her mind. You know, she had changed her mind already when she went to the clinic and, and walked out of there. And then, you know, being hidden from the outside world um, and then giving birth to me and never even looking at me. You know, but the sacrifices that she made, made me the person that I am today. You know, being a firefighter and a medic, I love, love to save lives. You know, it's, it's a part of me. And I've saved more lives today than, um, than I can count. But we need to work harder for the, the, the babies that are in utero. Um, they need protection as well. They need us to fight for them. They deserve to be here, especially children in cases of rape. You know, when I first found out that I was conceived in rape, my value went down. I, I thought of myself as less of a person. I've known God my whole life. I've been a Christian. And once I realized the path that he was leading me down was to share the story, I felt a total calm and a total peace in my life. He put me here to change lives, not only as being a firefighter and a medic, but to save babies that, that deserve to be protected. I have three children, two girls and a boy. Their lives have been affected by this. My, my mom and dad who adopted me, their lives were affected by this. You know, if I was aborted, what would their lives be like without me? I plan to tell her story, uh, the sacrifices that she made. Um, she, will forever be in my heart. And the, one of the things with her um, going to a, an abortion facility because of the peer pressure of carrying a child conceived out of rape, that's what we do to these girls today. We tell them that, it's, that their child is not gonna amount to anything, that a child conceived out of rape is, is a, a person that's gonna have a black cloud over them their whole life. I don't have a black cloud over me. I, I love my life. Uh, I've been married for 15 years uh, to the love of my life. My parents, you know, um, I couldn't imagine life without them. And because of her gift, um, I'm blessed.